Okay, this is 101, week five, part five. Um, so we're skipping that whole situation about the immortality of the soul. Please don't write about that. Don't pick that as a quote to discuss in a paper. It's not a, don't do it. It's just, it's too, this is, a, we have tough enough shit to deal with without trying to prove the existence of God by going backwards from the fact that my soul causes my arm to push a chair, then what moved, ugh, oh, I'm not doing it. Okay, so now, now, and anyway, immortality of the soul is not that big a thing for our class. So let's take a look. We're moving forward now. Of the nature of the soul, though her true form be ever a theme of large and more than mortal discourse, let me speak briefly, and in a figure. Okay, this is important and useful and good. So he says, he wants to talk about what the soul is. Though her true form be ever a theme of large and more than mortal discourse. So he says, I'm going to talk about the soul, but it's bigger than mortal discourse, meaning it's bigger and more complicated than any human being could ever describe. Remember, discourse is words. Uh, that's real, real important for following what's going to come next. Because the next thing he says here is also really helpful. He says, let me speak briefly and in a figure. When he says figure there, what he means is metaphor. Um, so it's important to understand that Socrates, the next five pages, Socrates is going to talk a lot about the soul. He does not believe any of this to be literally true. He thinks it's a metaphor. This is, he's not telling you what the soul is. He's telling you what it's like. So he's going to say, it's like it's being pulled by two horses in different directions. It's like it sprouts wings and flies away. It's like, so it's just a metaphor. It's very, very important because if you miss this, then you believe that you've been enrolled in a class where the professor is telling you crazy things about the structure of the universe. And I am not telling you crazy things. I don't know what the universe is like and the gods and the soul. I'm, nobody knows any of this shit. Um, Socrates says, I'm going to try to explain it in a figure, in a metaphor. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, he's not going to tell you what it is. He's just telling you what it's like. Please remember that for all of unit two. He's just telling you what it's like as best he can, because he's a mortal. He, I mean, a, a regular person. He's he's a mortal. Um, he's not. The, and no no mortal can grasp sort of these things. So he's just going to try to get close. All right, let's go. He says, "Let the figure be composite, meaning we're going to put it together from several different things: a pair of winged horses and a charioteer." Okay. Now, the winged horses and the charioteers of the gods are all of them noble and of noble descent, but those of other races are mixed, and the human charioteer drives his pairs. One of them is a noble breed, and the other ignoble and of an ignoble breed. And the driving of them, uh, driving of, them of necessity gives a great deal of trouble to him. Okay, so this is, he's not telling you what the soul is for real. He's just telling you what it's like. It's a metaphor. It's similar to this, he thinks. He doesn't really know, because mortals can't know these things. So... What does he think the soul is like? Well, he thinks the soul is like a chariot. I don't know if you know what a chariot is, but it's a kind of, you stand on it, and it's got wheels, on two wheels on either side. Um, and then in front, there's horses. There's two horses. And the horses pull the chariot. It's a, just, an, it's an old-fashioned, it's like, they didn't have cars and engines back then. They had chariots. Uh, and you would stand on a chariot, and you'd have like a whip, and you'd whip the horses, and they would go for, you control the horses, and you got them connected, right? And they, they, drive, they drive you around. So Socrates says the soul is like this cherry is like a chariot with two horses. But here's the tricky part. He says the souls of the gods have two good horses. But the souls of human beings have two very different horses. One horse that is good and one horse that is bad. Um, he says ignoble, meaning it's 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 a it's not a good horse. And the other one is a noble horse. It is a good horse. So he so so there's a there's a good horse and a bad horse tugging in different directions. He says that is what the human soul is like. What he's doing, and he's not he hasn't gotten to talk about love yet. What he's doing is is he's just trying to kind of um, he's just trying to kind of uh, he has to define the soul first because what he's going to say love is is that it's something. Um, He's going to say that love is something that affects the soul. Well, before he gets to that, he's going to have to say what the soul even is. 
Um, and that's why he's doing this. He's essentially defining his terms. And I know this is a way more complicated way than you would do it in a paper, but the idea is the same. When we're talking about um, uh, is a hamburger a sandwich, is a hot dog a sandwich, is a taco a sandwich? Um, what you're talking about there, you have to define. What is a sandwich? Well, he's trying to define this for himself. Um, and this is how he defines it. He says, he says the soul is like... Um, uh, a, a chariot being pulled by two horses. Okay. Actually, I'm going to say something else. Let me say something really quick. This is this is an, this is a sort of important sidebar thing. Um. Sometimes students, when they want to know what something is, they will look it up in the dictionary. It's a pretty good idea to look things up in the dictionary to understand what they are. Right? If you want to know what the soul is, you could look up the word soul in the dictionary or even an encyclopedia, let's say dictionary. You could look up a word in an encyclopedia to understand. If you want to know what love is, look it up in the dictionary. If you want to know what the soul is, look it up in the dictionary. Fine. The problem is, is that most students think that the dictionary is a rule book, meaning it tells you what is correct versus what is incorrect. Um, that if you have a dispute, you can settle it by looking at the dictionary. So if Socrates says the soul is like this and someone else says the soul is like that, you look it up in the dictionary and you figure out who's right. Um, dictionary doesn't work like that. The dictionary is not a rule book. The dictionary is a history book. The dictionary is the history of what words have meant in the past. So when you, it's useful to look things up in the dictionary because it lets you know how people in the past have used words. But you can use words to do whatever you want. If enough people make a mistake with a word, then the dictionary has to change. Um, so some people will be like, uh, well, you know, this, if, if some, so dictionaries sometimes disagree with each other if they're not updated. If you get an old dictionary, it might have a definition that would not be in a new dictionary. Um, I'll give you a really simple example. Momentarily. Momentarily used to mean for a moment. Used to mean for a moment. Um, so it, so you would use moment. So, so if you're on the subway and they say, we're stopping momentarily. Um, it means we're stopping for a moment, meaning we're stopping for just a little bit. The train is going along. We're stopping momentarily it means the train goes like this and it stops. One, two, three, four, and then it keeps going. That's stopping momentarily. But people fucked up the word momentarily and they started using it wrong. It's momentarily was supposed to mean for a moment, but people started using it to mean in a moment, which is different. Um, so your waiter will say, your food, will, your salad will be here momentarily. Well, wait a minute. If momentarily means for a moment, that means he's going to bring me my salad and then immediately take it away again before I have a chance to eat it. Um, so people use the word wrong for decades. And then the dictionary was like, okay, we give up momentarily also means, it means both in a moment and for a moment because people use it either way. Um, it didn't originally work like that. Originally, it only meant for a moment, and then people use it wrong, so it means in a moment. It's a really important thing to understand about how dictionaries work. Um, some people will say ain't is not a word. Ain't is definitely a word. Um, it has a meaning. There's a defin it, means, it, it has a meaning. It has a definition. It makes sense. I ain't going to do that means I am not going to do that, right? You say do not becomes don't, so how about am not becomes ain't. Totally reasonable. Totally makes sense. Um, people go, that's not a real word. It is a real word. And it's in the dictionary. Um, now, it's a word a lot of people don't like. Um, but why don't they like it? Well, they don't like it. Here's the fucked up thing. This is the fucked up lesson about dictionaries. They don't like the word ain't. It's not, they say it's not a real word or it's an illegal word or something. What does that mean? Words are tools. They do a job. If I say to you, if you say you got a beer and I say, no, I ain't got none and you understand what I meant, we have successfully communicated. So what's the problem? Um, it does, what, what is it? Is it a, it's, a, it's a fake word? Well, it seemed to work fine when I was talking to you, so you understood what I meant. I don't have any beer. So it makes a certain amount of sense. The problem with the word ain't, it's not that people don't like the word. They think they don't like the word, but that's not the problem. They don't like the people that like the word. Um, a lot of people think ain't is used by uneducated hillbillies or black people or whatever, and they don't want you talking like those people. They don't want to be reminded of those people. Um, and there's something kind of classist and racist about it. It's not great. Um, the point is, is that it's a perfectly sensible word. 
but we the reason we don't use it has to do with sociology. It has to do with the people that say it, um, but not with the actual uh, the actual word itself. Makes perfect sense. All right, I'll pick you guys up in the next video.